Hi, this is Hongshu from MotionCircles.com. In today's video, I'll show you how to do this animation in After Effects. This animation is inspired by Carl on Instagram from his amazing gradient arts. If you want to learn more about these gradient effects, check out his Instagram channel in the description below. You can now join our YouTube membership and community to get access to all of our previous and future YouTube tutorials working files for free, plus getting access to all of our motion design courses that have trained 50,000 plus students over the years. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, let's get started. First of all, let's create a composition called Demo Comp and then change dimension to 2000 by 2000. Click on OK. Next, let's create another composition called Color, make it 1000 by 500. Click on OK. We're going to add in three rectangles like this in three different colors. And then we're going to use this color composition as a base of our grading color. Next thing, let's create another composition called Pattern, make it the same size as our demo composition, 2000 by 2000. Click on OK. We're going to drag the color composition into the pattern composition. Now we have the color inside our pattern. Let's add a motion tile effect onto our composition. Now we just need to change the output width and height to duplicate the pixels of our color composition. If I change it to 600 in the output width, it's going to duplicate the pixels horizontally. And then if we change this value here, it's going to duplicate the pixel vertically so that it's going to fill the whole thing. That looks fine to me. And then let's go back to our demo composition. We're going to drag our pattern inside our demo. On the pattern composition, let's add a fast box blur effect. Let's change the radius to 150. And then for the pattern, since we're making the background, I want the background pattern to be bigger. So let's go to hit S on the scale property, change the scale to 300. That looks good. I also want it to be rotated. Let's hit R on the keyboard. Let's rotate it at 45 degree angle. Yeah, that looks fine to me. I think the color is a little faded. Let's change the blur radius to maybe 100 to make it less faded. Now we can just animate the position property, hit P on the keyboard add a keyframe. And before I animate, since I want to loop it around three seconds, I just want to turn off the Fastbox Blur so that I can see where the color is. So at the beginning, I want this pink color to be starting from this line here. I'm going to drag a margin guideline so that I know where the pink color starts from. I'm going to mark it here and then go to three seconds move the background to the right to make sure the pink align with the starting position. So it's going to create a loop. Let's hit N on the keyboard and then we can turn on the Fastbox blur back. Let's right click the two keyframes, easy ease, and then go to graph editor. Let's change it to around 66% of influence. And this is going to be our background animation. It will be looping. Next thing, let me zoom in. We can animate the shape animation. First of all, let's create a circle like this big. And then we're going to reposition the anchor point to the center of the circle. Also, we need to align the circle in the center of the composition. That looks good. First of all, I just need to animate the circle. So let's change the anchor point to the top of the circle. Use the motion tool, change the anchor point to the top, and then hit S on the keyboard to pull up the scale property and link this X and Y scale. Let's hit the stopwatch to add a keyframe. Let's go forward maybe to one and a half seconds. Let's change the Y scale to zero. So the circle is shrinking down. That looks good. And then I'm going to copy the influence from these two keyframes. Go to ease copy and then paste the value influence onto these two keyframes. That looks good. And then this one, we call it the top. Let's duplicate this layer. Let's call this one bottom. For this one, we need to have the anchor points at the bottom of the circle. Reposition it. And then with the same animation keyframes, we're going to have the circle coming down instead of going up. And the next thing, I need to create a square. Let's go to this shape layer and then just drag out a square. I also need to check the size of my circle. Right now, the circle is 708.4 copy this value i want this value to be pasted onto my rectangle size so that we have the exact same dimension between my circle and my 
square. Let me align the square in the center of the composition. If I change the color of the square, let's change it to a red color or orange color. That looks good. And then we're going to animate from the center of the square. Hit us on the keyboard, unlink everything, click on the stopwatch. At the beginning, I need to have the Y value to be zero. And then at one and a half second, I'm going to grow back to 100%. So let me copy the easing information on these two keyframes, paste it on here. And then let's put the bottom top layer on the top, bottom layer on the bottom. Let's see our animation. It's going to create this fake 3D animation. So this is going to be the base of our animation. Before we continue, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. You can also join our community to hang out with fellow designers and grow together. Check out the link in the description. Next thing, we just need to apply the gradient onto these three layers. Let's copy this pattern composition, Command D, just to duplicate it and hit S on the keyboard for scale property. Let's change it back to 100% in scale. And then for the position, let's delete the position and then we can reposition this pattern maybe around here. Let's just animate this pattern going diagonally and then we're going to paste in the easing value. With the pattern selected, I'm going to use the top circle as my alpha mat for the pattern layer. So let's go to select this top circle as my alpha mat. And then we need to duplicate the pattern two times, one, two. For the second copy, we're going to use the bottom layer as the alpha mat. And then the third copy, we're going to use the middle square as the alpha mat. So this one, we're going to rename it to square, middle square. That's good. Let's take a look. In order to create the 3D illusion, we need to offset the pattern animation a little bit so that we can show the edge of the animation. Let's call this one pattern top, and then let's call this one pattern bottom. Let's call this one pattern middle. We need to rearrange this one. So it's the top should be at the top and then middle is here, bottom is at the bottom. And then the next thing, we just need to offset the pattern top, maybe backward by one frames so that we can create this edge between the two layers. And now we should have an animation like this. Next, let's create two circles at the bottom and the top of the original circle. And then let's add a null object to control the rotation of my two circles just put in a rotation animation so that these two circles is gonna rotate based on the null object. Next thing, we're gonna create the aura animation on the top of the circle. So basically how we did this is we create a bunch of circles with different colors, and then each layer is gonna have a wiggle position effects with the circle wiggling inside the composition. And then we have a null object controlling the rotation and the rotation is set to time times negative 200. And this is gonna be my animation within this composition. Once we have this aura top animation, let's go back to my demo comp. Let's paste in my aura top animation. Now we just need to use the shape layer as the alpha mat for my two aura composition. So go to the first layer, select the track mat, and then select shape layer number four. And then the second layer, let's select the track mat, shape layer number three. Now we're gonna have two auras. However, what we need is we need to parent the gradient aura with the shape layer. So it's traveling with the shape layer. So let's go parent this first layer with layer four and then parent the second layer with layer two. And now we should have an animation like this. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to use a mask to cut out the middle square. Once the two circle is traveling, overlapping with the square, it's gonna cut the square into a circle. So to do that, we need to use a mask. In this layer over here, layer 10, what we did is we're using this mask to control the shape to cut off these two corners first. And then when the circle traveling over there to the top is cutting off the other two corner like this. And this is a mask that we're having. And with this mask, uh, we apply this 
pattern animation on top of the mask. And this is what's really happening in the back end. We have this very rough cutting animation like this. And then we overlay a circle pattern on top. So once we have this circle pattern overlay on top, you can see it becomes smoother like this. The circle on top is hiding all the messy information of my cutting of the mask in the back. This is a mask. And then once we place the circle on top, it's hiding everything in the back. It's only showing the edge being cut off. And that's the animation. And that's how we create this animation of morphing between the square and the circle. If I turn on everything, this is our animation. Right now you can see there's still a jump at the end because I didn't create a loop animation for my gradient aura. That's controlled by this aura animation because I got lazy and then we only created a time times effect so that right now within the three seconds, these circles are wiggling around randomly. If I want to loop this animation, I need to make sure the circle is going back to the same position and rotation at three seconds so that we can loop a three second animation within this composition to have everything loop outside. And to do that, you will have to create some rotation animation manually instead of using the expression. But since we're using expression to make it quick and fast, we cannot really loop this part of the animation right now. So the last thing we want to talk about is a highlight that goes across the outline of these shape layers. As you can see over here on my square in the middle, I have this highlight stroke that goes across the outline of this square. And if I click on this middle light layer, what I use is a CC light sweep effect. We're turning the light reception to cut out and then we're animating the direction of the CC light sweep. By controlling the direction, we can actually have a light that goes along the outline of the shape layer. So that's what we did. And after we have the light sweep, we also added a deep glow effect to make the highlights even more visible. And if I solo this layer, this is what it looks like. And then if I turn on this circle light, this is our entire animation for the lights. We're using the same way that we animated this middle lights. We're using a CC light sweep effect and the deep glow. If you want to learn more about the CC light sweep effect, I talk about this in another video that I have. You can check that out in the description below. Now let's take a look at our full animation here. That's it with this video. Hope you like it and learned a couple of tips and tricks for your next project. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Don't forget to join our membership on YouTube to get access to all of our motion design beginner and advanced courses, as well as all of the past and future working files. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.